All right, hey guys, I wanted to show you, um, up to this point, I've only used the covers by trimming them out perfectly the way, you know, around the edges with all the different little pages laying there. So that's how I've used it so far, every time. Um, even with my, even with my little prototype books here, that's how I used it. I cut them out perfectly right around the edges of the distressed edges part. Well, I want to show you how, why I left so much color around this because I wanted you to be able to wrap your chipboard and use it like a Coptic stitch or just use it as a fit instead of having raw edges, use it as a finished wrapped board. So that way the color goes all the way around and you don't have to worry about that way you don't have to worry about the white edges. My camera just shut off for some random reason. I don't know. Kind of strange. Uh, but anyways, so <laughs> I just wanted to show you how to do that. Um, I'm making a Coptic Stitch journal, and what I did is I printed off, I think I printed off all three printables, and I used a different paper, and I made signatures. Let me show you the paper that I used. Hang on, it's heavy. This is the paper that I used. It's for a laser printer and it's 32 pound and it's a, it's a, it's a really nice weight. It's a really nice feel. It's great for this type of journaling. Um, I don't know what the equivalent to that. I guess it would just be regular copy paper for... for uh, no, because it says heavyweight. It's a heavyweight paper and I got it at Staples. Um, okay, I've lost my train of thought. Okay, well, I'll just keep going, I guess. So I ended up trimming out the pages to the edge instead of instead of ripping them because that would be a lot of pages. I don't know how many pages are in here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight signatures. I had a leftover bunch of pages, so uh, I made another little book and I had to um, I had to do a, a shaker card. Isn't that cute? Those, um, that's the, those are the uh, Tim Holtz uh, Alpha Parts Sign Maker. And what I did was, where's it at? I used those same alcohol inks, the gold mixative and the latte color, and put it over top of the, of the black. You can see where I did it right there. Um, and changed it from black to be this antique vintage brass or gold color. It looks pretty cool. And then I added inside, those are little pieces of a bracelet that I just chomped, which was a little tedious. I just chomped the little rhinestones apart and stuck them inside of there. And then even these little ball, this little ball chain pieces, I cut them apart to make the inside of the shaker. And I used a piece of acetate and I messed up I, obviously I mess up all the time. <laughs> I messed up and I tried to peel up a part and it, the glue got everywhere. I'm not sure if you can see it really well. But that's okay. Whatever. Just going with the flow. But I really like it the way it looks. So I used the label. And then what I did was you can use, you can just use a piece of craft cardstock, fold it in half, and cut it down to size. Or you can print the liner page, see that's the liner page, you can print that on both sides and then your cover is is done. You just cut it down to size. Oh look what I did, I'm a smart one. Oh my goodness, <laughs> I just noticed I did something really silly. But it's for me, so I don't care, but I'll show you how silly I am. All right, there's the front cover, but when you open it up, look, it's upside down. I did not pay attention when I put the front cover on, or when I put the the uh, shaker card part on there. Look at that, it's upside down. So it's just a one signature. It was just the leftover pages, and it's upside down. So that's awesome. But I couldn't resist. I had to do. I had to do the little shaker and then I just uh, sewed it together with uh, seam binding and wrapped it around for the closure but yeah that's great sweet see there's just one one signature sewed it with the seam binding all right well moving on 
I just wanted to show you that real quick in the in the Tim Holtz letters, how you, how to change those from black to this antique brass gold look. So it was just using these two uh, alcohol inks. Okay, I'm gonna put that aside. Love that. That's awesome. Um, this book ends up measuring seven and three eighths tall by five and an eighth wide. Um, I'm assuming that's what the chipboard measures. No, the chipboard measured seven and five eighths tall by five and three eighths wide. So it's a little bit, it's a quarter of an inch bigger. I think it's a quarter of an inch bigger all the way around. So I went ahead and pre-cut my chipboard. This is medium weight chipboard. And I've got my cover piece here and I've already cut out my liner because you cut it out, you cut that out just the same. And so what you want to do is to help keep you straight, you want to cut out to the edge of the of the color there, the block of color that I left. Doesn't have to be perfect because you're not going to see any of that. Um, did I already say I was using the Secret Garden covers? I don't know if I did, but it is from the Artisan series. It's available in a bundle right now. I'll put the links below or you can get them individually. So I just cut it out, just trimmed it all the way out and what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to take Beacon fiber tack glue and I'm going to cover this back of this chipboard pretty good. If you go on a circular motion like this you get better coverage um, it's not going to get wet, so you don't have to worry about solid coverage. And all you want to do is flip it over, and you want to kind of center it um, in the middle of your of your page here. Wiggle it around a little bit, and you want to flip it, give it a little press, and it should be perfect, perfectly. If you put it in the center, it should be exactly where it needs to be just like that and you can take uh, usually if I'm definitely if I'm making this for someone else I would use my perfect trim you know you line it up slice it and it's the perfect angle but I'm just going to use my scissors and I'm going to go about an eighth of an inch away from the corner of the chipboard I'm going to do that on all four corners just like that and then the, the, the uh, covers were printed on the cardstock the 110 pound cardstock I get from Staples so I've got my corners done so now I'm going to take a bone folder and I'm just going to run along um, and score all the way around this piece of chipboard and that makes it easier for the folding so there's not as much cracking then I'm going to stand it up on the edge there and I'm going to score it again next to the chipboard so when it wraps it doesn't um, it doesn't crack so I'm going to do that to all four sides just like that and then the next step you want to do you don't have to do this part you can just use glue that would work too but I like to take my ATG gun or a tape runner like um, a Tombow permanent adhesive tape runner and I like to go around all of the edges and even go up over top of the corner of that chipboard and I don't know how well you can see that I'm trying to get it angled there we go so that when it folds over this edge right here will tack down as well you'll see what I mean in just a second so go all the way around and the reason you don't have to use super strong glue for this part, I mean this is pretty good, pretty good uh, strong glue, and don't get me wrong. Um, but since there's, there's going to be a liner and it's going to be glued down really well, it's going to help hold that down. So what you want to do is I start on the long sides first. Just press it down. You see how nice that folds? I take my bone folder and I go across like that. And then you want to take your corners and kind of pull them in a little bit just so there's not a whole lot sticking out. It's just cleaner. 
just takes a second and then you just want to fold those parts over like that and give it a little burnish with your bone folder and then you have really nice corners just that simple so there's the front you see how perfect it lined up I think it worked out just fantastic All right so then the next thing you want to do is you want to add your liner piece I am going to let's see do I want to use my tape runner you know I'm not going to use my tape runner for that I'm pretty sure I didn't no I'm just going to use my Beacon Fabri-Tac glue for that. I'm going to be a little bit more careful not to get uh, too much around the edges because it will smoosh around a little bit. Don't want it to smoosh out. And just give it good swirls, good circles. Spreads the glue out really good without using way too much glue. Then... I already, I think, yeah, I'm already, I've already inked these edges of the liner. So then you just kind of want to eyeball it to the center. Give it a good press. Just like that. Just like that. Then we need to ink the edges using the archival ink and coffee that you can't really see because it's got black ink all over the top of it. You're going to go around all the front and the back. Yeah, you can skip this part if you don't want to do an ink. And I didn't ink any of the pages, um, just so you know. I can't believe I put that, that uh, shaker label <laughs> on the wrong side of that little little bitty journal that one signature journal there oh well such is life welcome to my world all right so the next step will be I have a template that I had made to poke all my hose um, it makes it easier when you're doing a lot so I still have that template and I'm gonna lay it down on my front cover and I'm gonna mark where my hose are going to be and normally what I would do is when I make the front and back cover I would use the back cover the front cover to mark the hose for the other cover so I'm just going to eyeball it mark where the hose are and then I'm going to use the crocodile we are memory keepers crocodile I'm going to use a small hole and just kind of punch right where I marked. It seems they still have not fixed the problem with stuff getting stuck, especially when there's wet glue in, in there somewhere. It doesn't like to come out of that little hole there. But if that's the that's the least of my worries. It, All right, so far so so simple so then to attach it onto the front there I'm gonna get some crochet thread and because I had started and stopped on this there's not a, I didn't leave a tail normally I would just keep working and everything would just all be continuous uh, thread but since I have stopped I cut it off. Now I'm going to show you what you do if you run out of thread and you need to attach a cover. So, or the way I would attach it. All I'm going to do is go between the first and second signature right here. Or you could start inside too. That, I've done that a lot too. Um, but I'm just going to start from the outside and I'm just going to tie a knot. Let's make it snug. You don't want to pull too tight because it'll break. 
Oh, see? <laughs> just like, but look, it was the right part that broke. Yay! All right, so I don't have to do anything. I'm just going to leave that, and I will glue it when I get done. All right, so it's on there. So put your cover on top, and then you all have seen me do this before, but I'm going to go ahead and, and do it. You go through the top of the cover, pull it through, and then let me see if I can stand this up on its... And then you want to go between the first and second signature, go up underneath that thread and pull it. Make sure everything's situated where it's supposed to be. Then you want to go back through the cover again from the top. The same thing, go between the first and second signature underneath that thread. I like to do two or three times at least just in case, you never know. You don't want to do just one, that's not as sturdy. All right, so then you want to open your book, open to the center of the first signature, and then go through that top hole of that first signature. So then you want to come out into the center. Whoops. Come on. And then you want to go into the center hole. So you come back out of the spine. And then do the same thing. Go in through the top hole. Go between the first and second signature. Go back in the top hole. Between the signatures. Top hole. signatures and go back open it back up go and go in the hole there to get back into the center come back out the bottom hole or top hole whichever way you want to look at it go through the top between the signatures Through the top, between the signatures, Whoop. through the top. I don't. If you all have ever done this before, ever done the Coptic stitch, um, and you haven't used a curved needle, you do not know what you're missing. You need to use a curved needle. It makes life so much easier. All right, now I'm going to go back in to that first signature here. And I'm going to tie it off in here. Now you could have started in the inside and done this exact same thing. I'm just going to make a knot there. I'm going to go up underneath the uh, strings in the inside signature there and just go around and make a knot. You can go two or three times. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm losing my voice. I'm going to cut it off. Add a dab of glue. A little dab of do you. I'm going to put some there and I'm going to put some on this knot over here, just a little bit, since it ripped or tore. So you can see there where I added the, the top, or added the cover. So now I'm just going to take my, my ink let me, and I'm just going to change the color of that, of that thread. Maybe go on the inside and change that. Did I do that to the back side? Nope. There. And that's all there is to it. So now I have a nice journal that I can write in. Um, and look, it's the right side up. Yeah, it's the right side up. So I got, I got plenty of room to write. I can add pictures and do whatever I want. So that's just like a little bonus, a little, um, this is like a little extra video. But yeah, it's pretty, right? So you can use the Coptic stitch, you can, you can completely cover your covers. Okay, so it was just that simple. So now I have a journal. Um, okay, so just a reminder, these are available. We've got the Secret Garden. Let's see, I have, I have two in the Secret Garden covers. And then we have the Peaceful Journey, and we have the Way Home. Um, all of these are in a 
a bundle right now at a discounted uh, rate and it's a temporary thing it's only for a limited time uh, but you can also get each one of these individually I'll have all the links below so let me know what you think about my new artisan series printable mini albums um, using my paintings and I'm going to be doing some more so uh, let me know what you think give me a thumbs up if you like this video subscribe if you haven't already uh, again I appreciate you watching and I guess I will see you next time. Bye.